the national dress today. And as Stephen says, I'm not sure if he's a true Scotsman or not, but I really don't want to know that. <laughs> so let's all give a very warm applause for our next Emerald leader, Mr. Armand Nagadu. <laughs> today. Wow! Absolutely fantastic. But first, you want to find out? If I'm... No, who want to find out? <laughs> okay. A few people want to find out. Are we ready? Camera, recording. Are we ready? I'm not doing that. <laughs> Wife here, my two little girls, so I'm not doing that. Okay, fantastic. So, guys, my name is Aman uh, and Gadu. I'm so excited to be standing here today. I'm, I'm actually grateful to be amongst you here today. So, um, okay, okay, okay. Now, let me take you, walk you through um, uh, the step that I always work all the business partner that we work with or new people who come into the business these are all the steps that we take them through in order to help them to launch the business properly okay so let's just to let you know guys uh, uh, this skill uh, i learned it from professional in the industry i learned it from from top income earner in our organization so it's not for me directly so i learn and then i'm just going to share with you some of this knowledge okay so we're going to be covering some of the skill uh, first we need to set up your gps which is the game planning session and how to properly invite and uh, prospecting tips as well uh, how to host a home meeting uh, how to build a list which is very important in this in our, in our industry and how you actually stay connected. Stay connected mean you, mean you sharpen the saw, you make sure you keep with the skill and, and, you, and you, you keep going, okay guys? So, now, first one, uh, uh, game planning session. I'm gonna take an example so that you understand uh, uh, the background of what I'm gonna be talking about in terms of uh, the game planning session. Imagine, okay, imagine you are just uh, uh, sitting in your car, maybe somewhere in, in London or, or or, or wherever in London, just sitting in a car and you're coming to Glasgow. But imagine you don't know how to get to Glasgow. It's your very first time to actually try to drive to Glasgow. And there's no signpost on the way. So that means you don't know who, where to go. So my question to you is, how easy or how difficult will it be for you to get to Glasgow? So it doesn't matter which direction you take, okay? It might just, you might just end up uh, in, 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 in the north of uh, Aberdeen, you might just end up in, 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 uh, in, in Coventry, in Birmingham, or maybe take the direction to Paris because there's nothing actually pointing you toward the direction. But now, let me give you an example. Let's say someone come and give you, for example, a roadmap or maybe a, a, a TomTom -tom or a SatNav, okay? And then you key in that destination address and then you just follow the SatNav. The sat -nav. So how easy will it be for you to actually get to your destination. I think it's better because now you have a roadmap, you know exactly where you're going, and then it doesn't matter how long it's gonna take, but at least you're gonna get closer and closer to your destination. So, what we're gonna be talking today is the game planning session. We're gonna set up your GPS properly so that it will help you in order to build a successful business, a successful organization. So there are two most important factors when starting your business. The first one is the mentality, okay? The mentality will determine your reality. And the second one is your strategy, which will determine the type of uh, 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 result you will achieve in this business. So what we actually tell to people is, um, uh, uh, you need to work this business as if you, you're working your job. Why? Because 97% of people in the industry have a full-time job, okay, and, and, uh, and career. So we recommend working this business like you will work your job because 
uh, 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 is something you're already accustomed to do. Uh, if you don't wake up in the morning and then you go to work, if you have a full-time job, for example, you don't expect to have uh, uh, a salary uh, or an income at the end of the month. And the result of that would be you might end up losing your job or you might end up uh, not having to pay your bill and a lot of stress that comes with that, okay? So we advise you to launch this business and start working as if you're working a job at least for 90 days, okay? So I'm going to walk you through some of the questions that are asked uh, 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 your new business partner when they, when they, when they start working with yourself okay so the first question is why are you getting started this is so important the purpose is to determine okay what matter most to them are you making important for yourself as well it's so important okay because if you don't know the why okay if you don't know what matter most to them you cannot make it personal to you and one of the things we advise people to do is not just about thinking about what you want it's about writing it on the paper why because when we get distracted every single day for example we get bombarded by different advertisement campaign if you work on the city center for example you will see a lot of billboard and advertisement we get distracted by the tv by our neighbor friend and family every day that's our life okay but in order for you to keep track of what you're doing and to be on 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 on, on a focus on 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 your goal you need to write it down and most importantly you need to put it somewhere that when you wake up in the morning you can see written your goal and before you go to bed also you can see also your goal it's so important to do this part because some people miss that out, okay it's important it will help you to focus it will keep you like a reminder and not only that also sometimes when you're building your network marketing uh, business or maybe your business it, sometimes uh, it get tough you know challenges will come Believe me, it will come, okay? So uh, sometimes uh, maybe you are introducing people to, to the new opportunity and, uh, and they say they are coming and they don't come at all. And sometimes, for example, you invite friend, family to come to the presentation. They say they were going to be there, but they don't turn up. And you feel like your organization is not building. So the only thing that keeps you going is your why. You know why you're doing this and you keep reminding yourself, yes, it's possible you will get there, okay? The why will get you back up even when challenges come, even when you, you, are, you are knocked down maybe by different adversity, your why will keep you in the game day after day, okay? The first question is, why are you getting started? So now, the second question I ask for people building the business is, do you want to earn income slow or fast you know I, I always laugh all the time when i ask this question because most of the people they say fast we live in an instant gratification society everybody want to get it fast you know this good thing the good thing about our business is you can actually get your business launched and in a very short space of time you start seeing the result i'm not saying you're gonna get rich it's a get rich quick sim. No, that's not what I'm saying. Okay, what I'm saying is compared to other industry, you you get in this industry. We have seen people in a week, in two weeks, making the uh, great return based on what they they actually first uh, uh, from the uh, first expenditure. Because we have a system in place. If you do it properly, it requires some skill. You need to learn some skill, of course. You know, but you can actually make a return fantastic and very quick in this business as well. So the second question is, do you want to earn income slow or fast? The third question also you are asked is, if I work with you personally, okay, what type of income will you want to earn after a period of 90 days? Okay, 90 days is just to set the expectation that uh, it won't happen overnight because uh, 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 it's so important for people to know this business is built 
over a 90 day period we call it a 90 day game plan uh, we, we have a, a block of 90 days after the first 90 days we can do the second block of 90 days so it's 90 day after 90 day game plan so and we have seen a lot of people come in this business they follow the 90 day process and they become really really financial independent as well so i'm not guaranteed it's going to not going to be the same for you some people come after 90 days they are they, they, they are up uh, up and running some people take a bit longer uh, maybe 120 day 180 days so it's totally depend of the amount of effort and also the the type of uh, activity each individual is actually committed to to to, to be doing so now number four is to earn x amount of income let's say for example when you ask number three question if i work with you personally what type of income will you want to earn after 90 days let's say the person say for example uh, 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 one thousand uh, someone else can be, maybe say 500, someone will say 5,000, you know, it's all depend of what exactly they want to accomplish. But someone will say 1,000 after 90 days uh, uh, and someone will say 5,000, you cannot expect the same amount of hour to put into the business with those two people, from those two people. Okay, so that's why we're asking those questions. So uh, to earn, for example, 1,000 a month or maybe 5,000 a month, are you willing to put together a list of 100 people that we can expose our vision and vehicle, okay, to just like we have done with yourself, okay? So to earn maybe X amount of income, to earn 500 a month, to earn 1,000 a month, to earn 10,000 a month, are you willing to put together a list of one, at least 100 people that we can expose our product and services or our business so that you can, they can actually uh, 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 be exposed to the vision uh, or maybe the, the, the vehicle that we are actually using just like we are doing with yourself. Okay, that's the question on the, we, we ask also new business partners who are actually entering our organization. So the fifth question that we ask is, are you willing to invest 10 to 15 hours per week building the business to earn X amount of income. So are you willing to, to invest 10 to 15 hours per week building the business to earn the type of income that you actually asking or maybe require after 90 day period so uh, again as i said some people people who are looking for a 500 income at the end of the month will not have the same amount of involvement or the same amount of commitment uh, uh, per month or per week like someone who want to earn for example 10,000 10,000 a month so that's why we ask those questions so we can know how much effort how much time required from each person in order to build, help them build their business because you cannot ask uh, someone uh, uh, who is earning who want to earn 10,000 a month to, to commit for example 20 hours a week and you ask someone who is earning 500 a month to commit 20, uh, 20 hours a week so it's not going to be fair so that's why we need to uh, uh, make sure we are asking the question so we can fi find some some information from those new prospects okay so number six to assist you with earning x amount of income are you willing to set up four consecutive one hour session okay so that we can actually meet and sit down and plan your business properly so to assist you with earning x amount of income are you willing to set up four one hour session so this is the time usually i would go and pick my calendar i will open my calendar i will put in front of the prospect i will ask them which day during the week is your less busy day okay let's say they say wednesday okay if it's wednesday i will ask them what time on wednesday will be most suitable for you let's say they say maybe uh, three o'clock or three to four i say okay could we book like four consecutive one hour every Wednesday from 
uh, uh, 3 o'clock to 4, 4, 4, 4 p.m. so that we can sit down and help you achieve your goal. So I will go in my calendar, I will book, I will make sure I, I, I secure the four days in my calendar for the, for, for the, four, for the whole month, uh, every Wednesday from 3 to 4 p.m. and then I will make sure they also did the same, so they book the time, I will then discuss about the location, I will then discuss about exactly what we're going to be covering for the next first for the, for the next meeting so i will let them uh, 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 go with some some material like video material and also i will make sure they know they're going to be watching those videos before our next exposure and then i will go through the list building with them so that when they come they have at least the list of 100 contact so that's why we ask the question okay this is so important booking the calendar is the most important part for the first meeting with your prospect so now I'm going to give you a one piece of advice for this first part. You know, you need to be showing your team member how this is done. Okay. It's about showing, shadowing and duplicate. Because if you are dealing with a new person, always make sure you have someone with you who is shadowing what you're doing. Because by looking at you doing the, the, the whole exercise, they, that's the way for them to learn. Okay, so next time when you're not there, they can actually duplicate what you're doing. So it's about showing, shadowing, and duplicate. Now, the first part was all about uh, uh, planning your, your business, the game planning session. So the second part now, we're going to be talking about how to build a list. This is so important. People are everywhere, okay? Uh, all the time, uh, many closer than you think. Some people said, uh, I don't know anybody. You know, where can I find people? Okay, I'm going to give you some few tips how you can find people and they're even closer to you than you think, okay? So the first thing, I'm going to give you, I'll, I'll give you this thing that, these tips that you're going to use that will help you build a fantastic list of candidates. So your first one is your cell phone. Everybody owns a cell phone. So when someone tells me, I don't know anybody, I say, do you, do you have a mobile phone? If you have a mobile phone, okay, bring it up, okay? Uh, open up from uh, your contact list, look from A to Z, and then you will see you have a lot of people there. Okay, you know, some people they start prejudging. Oh, this guy, I don't think he's gonna have the money. Oh, this lady, I don't think she's gonna be interested. That's the wrong thing to do. Okay, the first thing, get your cell phone, put the name without prejudging any single person from one to 100. Just put the name on the list. The second place you can find people social media. Who does not own Facebook? Oh, who doesn't have an account on Twitter? You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, we all have social media uh, and one or another. Okay, Instagram or all. All this all I'm asking you get those people on your list but always make sure you get a phone number it's not just about putting their username on Facebook but it's about getting them to give you your phone number and again we discuss about some of the technique that we use in order to help them to do that so and the other place where you can find actually people is email. I'm not asking you to bombard or people with email or junk mail. I don't want that, okay? It's about having a genuine conversation with people and asking them to give you the phone number so that you can share something fantastic you're working on with them, okay? That's how you get the phone number from email list as well. So, uh, avoid prejudging, as I said, okay? When you are building the list, don't prejudge. Do not prejudge. I have a lot of story I can be telling you about people who prejudge. And myself, I used to do that before, but I stopped doing it because uh, you get surprised the type of people who work in your organization. You prejudge them and, and they come and blow your business, okay? Do not prejudge. So, I'm going to give you five pointers. This, this five pointer is just like a guide when you are building your list you need to consider number one married people okay people who are married or maybe living with partner they have you have two uh, uh, two uh, way of, of of increasing your contact list because if you have a husband and a wife or maybe a, a two partner okay you have two lists from the house okay the husband have their own contact list and the wife uh, the missing has their own contact list so that's double the amount of people that can walk into your organization second people who have or care for children uh, these people already have experience being patient for example okay so for them building a business even if it doesn't happen straight away you know they have uh, experience 
this being patient with children children if you if you have children you you have to be patient because you learn a lot of skill from them how to be patient so number three if you own or lease a house or an apartment, people who own a house or, or, or an apartment or, or they lease an apartment, they have extra bill to pay. So they are always out there looking for a way to, 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 pay, to, to, to make extra, extra income so that they can afford to pay their mortgage or maybe to pay their rent or the bill and all these things. Okay? So we are also looking for people aged between 25 and 45. Why? Uh, we are not saying if you are aged 18, 19, you are not part of this business. No, obviously not. Uh, you can actually, we have a lot of great, great leader in the organization. They are under 25. But what we're saying here is, we're saying people aged between 25 and 45, they already have an experience, a life experience, whether it's through their work experience, their job, you know, they have a story to tell. So this type of people, they're a bit more mature. So that I mean, uh, uh, these are the great candidates of, uh, of, of the, this type of business that we are talking about. So, but don't limit yourself just on those people. We're giving you just a guide, okay? So, number five, people with a household income, 30K plus uh, or 80K per year. These are the people, they have a comfortable life, okay? They, they can pay their bill most of the time without any problem. But these people always can save a bit of extra. So they have money sitting sometimes aside and they are looking for a great opportunity where they can put their money in. So these people, they can afford, for example, to start with the good packages in our business. So it's important to also put those people. So when building your list, you need to consider these five pointers. Married people, have care for children, own lease a, whole, uh, uh, a, lease a home or apartment, uh, age between 25, 45, uh, household income 30 to 80K per year, okay? But not limited to that. Great, so now, uh, let's talk about the four checker. When you are building your list, okay, you need to now categorize your list into what we call the four checker. So let me explain. Number one, self starter. Okay, this individual, these are the type of people who just get things done. You don't have to be uh, 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 telling them exactly what to do. You just explain the business. You explain, give them the instruction that, that need to be done in order to be successful in this business. They will just go and do it. You don't have to babysit them. You don't have to wake up in the morning and tell them you need to get dressed up and you need to make a phone call. You don't need all that. These are self-started. Mostly, this type of individual, they are entrepreneur. So they will do it with you or without you. Even if you quit the business, they will keep doing the business. These type of people, you want them in your organization. So when you find one of those people, put them on your top 20 list because these are the people you need to call. So the second category of people, the four checker is called teachable, trainable, and coachable. So it makes your life easier when you're working with some type of individual who can actually suck the training you are giving them and apply them without prejudging. Because uh, we have uh, a lot of different uh, people coming in the organization with different background and experience. People, for example, who've been working in corporate organization for the past 20 years, but they will come with their baggage, they want to apply and they want to put it on the table. But this business is totally different. You know, I learned from a mentor, uh, even if uh, you, you join an organization, even it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter your background, it doesn't matter whether you were a, a, a CEO or a, 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 a managing director of a big company, it doesn't matter. The person you need to listen in this organization, in your new business, is your upline. Look at people who are successful in the organization. Listen to them because they're doing something right. They do they do they know exactly what needs to be done in order to take you from where you are to where you want to go. So it's so important to follow these people. Okay. The third one is called financially able to start this business. So um, uh, you want to get those people straight up and running because they have the money. You know they are financially able to start the business. You know they have money. You know these are people you want to call fast because if they like it, uh, we're not saying everybody who have money will, will, will come and, and decide to join the business. No, but if they like it, if they like it, they will just do it. Okay. So we're also looking for influential, influential people. You know people who have influence. So it's so important 
uh, uh, for example, if you know, for example, a pastor, uh, a pastor usually they have a lot of people in the, the congregation. So imagine you have someone like a pastor in your organization, or maybe an imam from the, the mosque, for example. These people have a lot of followers. So uh, when you have influential people, leader of community as well, if you have them in your organization, fantastic. So these people, you want to call them fast. You don't want to waste time with them, okay? So for checker, self-starter, uh, teachable, trainable, coachable, uh, influentially, uh, financially able to start the business, and uh, influential. These are the four checkers. Now, uh, this is uh, just to show you uh, uh, the, the, the how the list looks from the 1 to 100. This is exactly what, how you, you want it to be. You number them from 1 to 100. Okay? You get the name and get the telephone number as well. So now we're gonna go to uh, one of the vital skill in this uh, business called network marketing. It's about inviting, okay? So how uh, to properly invite? So imagine you have a shop and nobody's working in your shop. Uh, chances are you're not gonna make money, okay? So in order for you to make money, you need to be inviting people. You need to be bringing people in your organization, or you need to bring people, expose people to the business opportunity as well. So that's exactly what we're doing, inviting. But some people, they don't do it properly, you know? And that's why you can have a list of 500, 1,000 people, it doesn't matter. But if you burn your list, you, you, you're not gonna get anybody in. Because if you don't invite properly, you're just burning your list. So uh, now you have the first 20 people we, we always ask you to call, these are your, 20, your top 20. The top 20, these are the five pointer and the four checker. So these are the people who constitute the five pointer we discussed about earlier and the four checker. This top 20, you need to get on the phone as soon as possible and start calling them, okay? So what to say and what not to say. So these are the word, phrase, and things to avoid when inviting someone to a presentation. The first one is called opportunity. Don't use the word opportunity. Don't use join this new business or sharing startup course or meeting, uh, presentation, seminar, uh, upline, uh, MLM, all this, uh, network marketing, or maybe you say this thing that I'm doing. You know, these words and phrases create a sense of pain for people due to the preconceived notion about the network marketing industry and people who uh, 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 actually represent it, okay? Because people have been bombarded by different network marketing companies, so, and those phrases tend to be the same, coming up again and again and again, and some people get fed up, okay? So we, we change the way uh, uh, we, we, we use it a bit, we, we kind of treat it a bit, just to make it, uh, to give it another kind of uh, different flavor, so people will feel it, Feel, feel less pain when they hear that kind of word. We're going to be giving you some examples shortly. Okay, let's look at best, best practice here. Okay, best practice. Um, first, the length of phone call or the invitation need to be not more than uh, one to two minutes. Okay, don't pass two minutes. If you pass two minutes, that means you're talking too much. You're giving a lot of information and you don't need to be selling it. Okay, you don't need to do that. You need to be quick, sharp. You need to be really quick when you're inviting people, guys. So important. Okay, so and then you need to also make sure the first thing we're inviting, make sure you clear your calendar. Make sure they're going to be in the city when the presentation or maybe the webinar or the event is going to happen. So, for example, if you are doing an event on Sunday, for example, make sure when you call them, the first thing is to clear the calendar. I'm going to be giving you some example so that you know exactly what we're talking about, okay? So, now, I'm going to give you first an example of what not to do when inviting. Let me, let's say, for example, I'm calling John. I'm calling John to come... Uh, and, uh, and have a look at, at what we do, okay? I'll pick up my phone. John, how you doing? John, listen, I have a fantastic opportunity for you here. Okay, John? John is about uh, business online. Uh, uh, yeah, the company name is One Life or uh, it's uh, One Coin or, or it's whatever, okay? So, um, you just keep giving the company name on the phone. It doesn't matter the company name, you just keep calling the name of the company. So, uh, and then you, 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 I said to John, John, you know, people are making a lot of money. You're going to make a lot of money, John. Okay. So I know a lot of people doing it. They are making a lot of money. They make fortune. John, the, the, the business meeting or, or the, the presentation will be tomorrow night. 
I will send you the detail and you come with me, John. Yes, yeah, a great opportunity for you, John. Okay, now. So let's review this one a bit. So I've, I, I call John. The first thing I'm telling John is about business, it's about opportunity, it's about marketing, it's about all this. But the problem with that, okay, is because I'm giving too much. But the problem with that is because I'm saying too much to John, okay? So I'm giving up everything to John. And John might just go on Google and start Google uh, typing what is that company name and start researching on the company name. And you and me, we know Google is not the best place to do the, to do the research. You know, a lot of people go there, a lot of bloggers, they will just put anything on Google just because they are looking for traffic for their business. So if someone go and look for an information about a company, most of them say it's a scam. I mean, if you want to, to not to take my, if you take my word for it, but I'll give you an example. Go on Google today and type, water is a scam. I mean, water, water, we green water every day, yeah? But type, water is a scam. You will see what's going to come out. Okay, anything you tap in Google and say uh, it's a scam, it will come out as a scam or maybe uh, more information, especially network marketing industry. Go and tap legitimate company like Airbolife, ACN, and uh, all these company armways, you know, you will see a lot of information about this company that is a scam. But we know it's not a scam, it's just the name people are giving it, people are doing it for some reason, maybe they have not done the business properly and they were not being successful in this type of company. But we know those are legitimate companies and a lot of people are making a lot of money. Okay, it's been successful, so if you put 100% in, you, you, you get 100% out. You know, there's nothing for free, there's no free meal. In any business, you start uh, normally and then you put the work effort, you learn, you develop some skill, you're going to be successful. Okay, so I'm going to give you the second example how I'm going to call John. Maybe I invite John based on the, the one of the script. We have some script there on the board. You know, we can, we can send it to you as well if you want to. So I'm going to call John again, but I'm going to use... Uh, let's say I'm calling John for a webinar. I'm going to have a webinar tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, at 8 p.m., okay? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick up my phone. I'm on the phone. I'm calling John. When John pick up, hey, John, how are you doing? It's Aman here. How's the family? Oh, John, great. I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually running into a meeting, John, uh, but it's good I caught you on the phone. John, what are you doing tomorrow between... 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Yes, John, after work. Yeah, jo John, the reason I'm calling is because recently I've been working with some successful entrepreneur and we are working on the project uh, that I really, really uh, 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 like or, or maybe I, I really, really enjoy. But I would like you, John, to take one hour of your time to actually have a look at what we're doing and give me your honest opinion on that. Can I count on you, John? Yes, tomorrow, 7 p.m. Yeah, John, I will send you the details. But please, John, could you make sure you are on time because I respect these people uh, very well and, and, and I, it's very important for, for me to be on time. With, and I only have a couple ticket, so it's important you be on, on the call or, or on time. Can I count on you, John? Okay, great. I will send you the details, John. Thank you, John. Thank you. So this is one of the examples. It's a simple invitation. John is your friend. He will definitely come and have a look just to advise you. I'm not asking John to come and join a business. I'm not asking John to come and, uh, and uh, maybe uh, buy a packages or maybe it's a business online. I'm not doing all that. I'm asking John to come and assess a business and working with some successful entrepreneur, okay, to take one hour, one hour of his time and give me his honest opinion. Okay, so another example, let's say for example, you, you're going to invite your boss, maybe you work for your boss for some few years, you respect him very well, and then you go and then, okay, you knock on the door, knock, knock. Hey, John, how are you doing? John, you have a minute, please? John, uh, you know, I always respected the way you, you conduct your business and the way you treated us here. I always respect it. I like working for you and I respect the way you make your decision. John, recently I've been involved in a project with some successful entrepreneur and, and, and the project, they're coming here in town. I, I would like you to take, if you can take just one hour of your time and, uh, and, and review what we're doing and give me maybe some advice on that, if you don't mind, will you? So, great. 
what is it about? Uh, uh, John, you know, um, I, can't, I can't explain it myself. That's why I would like you to hear from the expert so that uh, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Would you? Please. Thank you. So that's an example I will invite, for example, someone I'm working for or a boss or someone like that. So there's different example, guys, that you can use in order to impact, in order to get people to come and actually have a look at the business that we're doing. You don't want to be the one explaining. Okay, remove yourself when inviting. Remove yourself from from uh, the, 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 the presenter. Don't be the one presenting the business. Our job here is to invite okay our job is to invite it's not to explain it's so important that we understand that it's to invite our job as an independent business representative especially when you are new is to invite invite people to come and have a look on a project that you're working on and let the presentation do the job let the the, the event does the job for you let the pbr or your leader your upline leader who have experience explaining the business let them do the job for you okay at the same time as they're doing the job remember we talk about show shadow duplicate you're going to be shadowing your leader you're going to be learning as you're shadowing them it will come a time that you're going to be the one showing and then you will have someone to shadow you so it's so important to follow the process, guys. There's a lot of different ways to invite. I'm not going to go through all the script. I'm just giving you some tips today so that when you invite people, don't be the one uh, 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 stopping them to actually see the whole picture. You know, it's like standing in front of the TV and you're trying to point the TV to someone to look at what is going on in the, on the screen. And then you, 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 you're on the way, you know. You need to remove yourself from the, from the, on, on the way and then point... The, the screen to the person who want to see whatever going on on the TV. So it's so important to not to not be the one stopping them to actually have a look at the fantastic opportunity that we have. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, 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 about inviting. But some some of the tip I'm going to give you is about handling objection. You know, you always have objection when you are inviting people to something new, uh, whether you you. you you, you do it properly or not, there's always going to be certain people who will bring some objection. Okay, I'm going to give you some tips uh, how to handle them. Let's say, for example, someone asks, what is it? You know, or maybe tell me more. Or is it network marketing? Or, or is it one of those things? These are some of the stuff we hear, we heard when we're inviting people. Uh, uh, or maybe someone say, I've heard one of those things before. Okay, let's, let's me... Uh, for someone who say, for example, what is it? Okay, uh, I would say, oh, John, you know, I, I said I'm just running in the, into a meeting. I don't have time to explain on the phone, and uh, uh, it's best that you come and listen to it. Okay, so what if I said, for example, oh, say, tell me more, tell me more, oh, John, I would love to, John, you know, but it's best that you you you, you get it from from an expert you know so i don't want to spoil it for you john i want you to have the full picture from the expert so you can you can advise me more on that okay so uh, someone will say for example is it one of those things so when someone say is it one of those things the only question i ask is what things okay don't overcomplicate it what things let him talk he say, is it one of those things maybe he's talking about something good you know you don't know when he say, is it one of those things? Don't be in the defensive. Just let him talk. What things? Okay? And if someone say, for example, is it network marketing? The first question I will ask, are you looking for network marketing? If the person say yes, uh, then you, you, you need to come uh, uh, and see what we do. If the person say no, uh, then you need to come and see what we do. Okay? Or oh, great, you need to come and ha have a look at what we do. Or oh, great, you need to come and have a look at what we do. Whatever you say, whether no or yes, is it network marketing? No, great, you need to come and have a look at what we do. Uh, yes, great, you need to come and have a look. So it doesn't matter. Okay, these are some of the tips that we give you uh, <laughs> when you are inviting someone and you have received some objection. And there's more, we're going to be doing training how to handle more objection uh, in the future as well. Okay, guys, so now uh, the, the, the other stuff we're going to be talking is about prospecting. Okay, now uh, sometimes when we, are, we, are, we, we have our list, uh, we tap into our, our one market, we call it one market. It, it, it comes a time naturally when you, you feel like you run out of people. 
okay maybe you you go and and, and explain the business to your friend family member and everybody say no <laughs> you know have you ever been there everybody say no oh it's one of this thing again and and it's like you don't have anybody you went through your mobile phone you speak to everybody and they come a time they say oh you know what Pfft, uh, i don't have anybody anymore i spoke to everybody but i don't have anybody anymore so we're going to give you some tips how to prospect properly, okay? So prospecting. There's a technique we use called the form technique. F-O-R-M, okay? F stands for where are you from? From. So this is when you go out. Don't go out to prospect. Don't go out to look for people, but go out like you normally go out, you're socializing or maybe you're doing your shopping, but half in the back of your mind, that you have a business you need to look after. You have a business you need to take care of. So when you are out there, use the form technique. You are maybe socializing or maybe you're doing your shopping. You meet people every day. We meet millions of people every day. Okay? Create the network. Create the relation. So where are you from? That's F. Okay? You, 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 because a lot of people you meet, sometimes they don't come from the same city. They don't live in the same city. Maybe they are just here to visit. That opens the conversation. Let them talk. Where are you from? Let them talk, okay? So, and then O stands for occupation, okay? What do you do professionally, for example, okay? That's the O, op occupation. Uh, what type of business do you do? So this question, people like it when you ask them, what type of business do you do? Because they feel like, oh, you see them as a business person, they like that, you know? And that's about the occup <laughs> occupation, all right? So uh, recreation, R stands for recreation, okay? What do you do for fun, okay? So what do you do? These are just the questions, the tips, and the guidelines for you to know exactly how to engage with people when doing the proper conversation, okay? And the M is the most important bit, stand for message. So when you finish talking to the person, the whole purpose of prospecting is to get your phone number. So the message you're going to leave at the end is so important. I'm glad we had a chance to connect. Let's be sure to stay in touch. What is the best phone number I can contact you on? So that's how you end up the conversation before you leave the person. Don't just spend an hour talking to the person and then bye-bye, see you next time. You don't take up the you don't pick up your phone number. How are you going to see them again? You know, if it's in the pop or if it's, you know, you, don't, you need to create new network. If it's in the gym, you have a new person on the gym. Oh, yeah, go and chat to them. Man, how are you doing? I see you're, you're, how long you been here doing the exercise. You know, where are you from, by the way? You know, you just chat to the person at the gym and then occupation. What do you do professionally? You know, just get them, let the conversation flow. Okay. And then, oh, apart from the gym, what do you do for fun? You know, that's how you create. And then at the end of the day, or oh, it was pleasure chatting to you today. Uh, let's make sure we, we keep in touch, you know. What's the best phone number to, to get you on? So that's how you create that using the form technique. And then you, you create a new relation. You get phone number on your prospecting list and your contact list. If you keep doing that, even if you have two new people every single day, in your contact list, even if it's one, at the end of the week, you have at least six to seven new people on your contact list. What will it do to your business? One to two, one to six to seven, let's say one to five. Five people every single week. In, in four weeks, you have 20 new people, 20 new phone number. People you never knew before, but you just have the phone number. So how will it do to your business, okay? But now, when you get those phone number, the the, the 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 secret is in the following up. You need to follow up. It's not just about having the phone number and do nothing about. You need to follow up. So important, guys. Okay. So when you follow up, this is some of the tips we're gonna give you. Remind them first where you met. So when you get someone on the phone, you need to remind them where you met. If you met them at the gym, oh, John, it was great meeting you at the gym uh, 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 yesterday or maybe two days ago. Uh, uh, I, I, was, I was glad meeting you at the gym. Uh, uh, I enjoy our conversation about, I don't know what you discuss about. Remind them what you discuss about. Because after, people meet people every day and then sometimes they tend to forget. forget. Okay, remind them about the discussion. So that to remind, to, bring, to kind of bring them back into that. That, that atmosphere again, okay so and then as you're chatting with the person if they 
ask you, for example, uh, 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 what you do, or, or, or maybe they give you a hint for you to talk about what you do, you know, take that opportunity to explain about your business and maybe to invite them about the opportunity or, or, or whatever we're going to do. If it's a webinar, again, you take that opportunity to invite them, okay? Again, you follow the same script that we gave you and to invite them to the webinar or maybe to a meeting or to an event, okay? So it's so important to follow that. So the next one, uh, we're going to just touch base on how to host a home meeting. This is a, a great skill as well, uh, because let me tell you why. Uh, the best thing about this strategy is it, it not only it works, but it's also duplicated because uh, 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 an in-home meeting, or we call it sometimes tea party, okay, is the recommend method to expose your business to prospects. But it also, listen to this, according to the DSA, the Direct Selling Association, 70% of the estimate 200 billion generated annually in the industry come from home meeting and presentation. Wow. So from the 200 billion revenue generated a year, at least 70% come from home meeting. So that means you meeting going in people's house actually to do the presentation, to show them the plan. Okay, you're traveling up and down to show them the plan in your own, at the com own comfort of your own home. The great thing about this is you, not only it works, but it duplicates. Because imagine you, you're showing the business to a new person in your house. They like it, they join it. They will see how easy it is because if they can just move from house to, to house to go and visit their friend and show them the business and they like it they're making money they're changing life they're making money it's so easy there's nothing complicated about that okay so it duplicate that's why it's actually a great great deal to know how to do presentation and actually to to help you duplicate your, uh, your organization as well okay and also the size does not matter it doesn't matter the size of people uh, uh, in the house it might be two people only maybe three maybe five it doesn't matter the size you need to do the best presentation always deliver your best because you don't know who's sitting you are sitting next to you you don't know imagine i'm telling you something uh, in network marketing one plus one no, is not equal to two one plus one is equal to 11. So from one person you bring in the business that person can have a list a contact list of 100 people who can bring 10 people in your organization so one plus one is not equal to two so when you see one person in network marketing don't consider the person as one person because you don't know your network is so important okay size does not matter so now uh, these are some of the recommend days and time for you to do a presentation uh, weekend uh, 7 p.m fantastic uh, sorry weekday 7 p.m is fantastic for the for the business why because people go to work nine to five and by the time they come back uh, they have a time a bit of time to go and, and do their own stuff uh, maybe look after the children uh, maybe uh, get the dinner out of the way and before they come to the, to the event okay if it's an event or maybe to jump to the webinar okay so uh, uh, it's always good to do weekday 7 p.m on board and the weekend, we recommend Saturday, Sunday to, to do at least two to three uh, PBR or home meeting or presentation one-to-one uh, uh, -one because weekend, most of the people actually in this industry will do it part-time. They only do weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And those weekends, they do at least three to four to four presentations. They expose people to the maximum so that they can utilize the time properly. So weekend is a fantastic day to actually do a lot of presentations. Okay, so um, these are the, the home meeting outline. So it's just to give you a guideline how to, to follow your, your meeting. You need to make sure you have a TV if you're going to be doing a presentation. You have a TV or a, if you're using a projector, you have a screen. You need to make sure you have some of these things and uh, uh, make sure you have pen and paper for your guests because some guests like taking notes as well okay and also have a sign-in sheet so people coming in they can put their name and phone number the reason we do the sign-in is because you can invite someone is bringing his friend you don't have his friend phone number so but by getting them to sign in their friend will put their name and phone number and then you can use that to follow up later to ask them how they like best about what they saw and all these things so you can follow up so it's so important to have that 
okay uh, sorry my voice is going a bit so it's been a long day okay so uh, business in home uh, 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 also for tax purposes you need to make sure uh, okay uh, uh, you have the signing sheet also because we are self-employed we need to take a record of everything we do so having a signing sheet just proof to the tax man that you've been doing business you've been conducting business into houses okay uh, um, yeah so uh, 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 make sure, okay, you, 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 you let them know where the rest room, uh, if for example they want to use a toilet and so on. So this is kind of the, the, the meeting timeline, okay, 7 to 7.20 you turn up the music uh, and you, you introduce some, some tea, coffee to guests, you know, we don't, we don't ask you to cook, don't cook because if you start cooking, you will start smelling in the house and, and not only that, you are a new person, you are bringing in the business, will will start seeing, oh, if I'm doing this business, that means I will be I have to be cooking for everybody. I don't want to do that. You want to make it easy. You want to make the business sound easy for everybody so that they don't they don't feel like oh obliged to do certain things. You just make it simple. Water, sometimes you just get people water. Simple. You have tea, coffee, you don't need to. Don't 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 do things that you will not duplicate, okay? So from 727 to 85, turn the music off, okay, and then uh, go to the front. If you are the one hosting, go and uh, introduce yourself to your guests and then uh, 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 let them know the, the agenda of the day and let them know about the guest speaker who is here to do a presentation for them. If, for example, you bring in your leader or maybe one of the speakers. Okay, so introduce the presenter, identify them properly, make them feel like it's a top man or top woman who is here for us today to, 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 to show us what we do. Okay, and then uh, uh, after the presentation, uh, what you do normally is uh, uh, you make sure you put the music back on. Don't start taking questions uh, uh, publicly because the, the danger with that is uh, if one person, if one person does not like what he, see, he, he saw or, or maybe they have some, a question that is, might affect other people and you're taking the question in public, it might just destroy your whole, your whole team. So make sure you take question privately. When you put the music on, uh, get one-to-one, -one, get people and... And, and, and make sure you get those people who are positive about the business in one corner and people who are negative in another corner. And people who are ready to sign, get them to sign up straight away, get them the free back office or maybe get them to start on the packages and, and, then, and, and set them up for the next meeting for the launch. It's so important for that, okay? And yeah, always focus on people who are positive on the, after the event. Always focus on those people who are positive. All right. So yes, uh, I think uh, this is this is it. We cover we cover the, the 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 launch process. This is how you launch your business properly. Uh, as I said, if you do it properly and you do it more often, you're gonna duplicate in your business and you're gonna create a successful uh, a downline of a distributor and you're gonna build a fantastic and a phenomenal business. So. On this, I wish you all the success and we believe this simple step that we share with you today will take you from where you are to where you want to go. And if me, I can do this. I think every single person sitting in this room today can do it. And if I can manage to wear a, a skirt and stand in front of you guys <laughs> today, you know, I, I'm telling you, that show you, you know, it's, it's, everything is in here. Sometimes we put ourselves a lot of limitation. We feel it's too hard. Even before the person start talking, you already say, you know what? I'm not interested because you hear that somewhere else. Or the person who first introduced you to this industry never actually took the time to explain it to you properly. And that's how we miss out something. You know, the definition of a poor person is, is someone who passed over opportunity and I hope today you will listen to some of our guests here and be, have that open mind that we had when we traveled down to London because without us traveling down to London, we wouldn't be here today. It doesn't matter the way I sound. It doesn't matter my English. It doesn't matter. Even if I'm speaking Chinese, Japanese, it doesn't matter the way it come out. But what matters is what works. Thank you very much, guys.